I'm Pat Gunn, and these are my thoughts on the ongoing work on my DWS platform, which, uh, as you might have seen in the previous videos that I did on this, is an attempt to write a new uh, blog slash review engine, uh, and I'm doing it in Go. And I'm building it at least moderately off of the work that I previously did on a wiki blog engine some years back. Uh, I wrote that uh, piece of software in Perl, uh, and it was called Pound. And, um, and so the things that I've done since the last video are that I, I have basically, uh, I have what's called a, um, a minimum viable product for the blog platform. And what this means is that I have the I have the software up to the point where uh, where you can basically barely use it and it demonstrates the most mainline functionality of the software there's still a lot of refactoring to do but it's beginning to get usable for at least one of its functions I haven't yet started on the review engine but right now if I wanted to use this uh, as a blogging platform again. I could. It would be pretty rough. Um, but generally in, in the lifespan of a, uh, of a new piece of software, hitting MVP is a significant event because it, it changes the way that you think about a piece of software. And that before you, you really get a piece of software working in any, in any uh, kind of full sense. Uh, all you can have is unit tests at most. And you're still kind of fumbling in the dark, and you also don't know if your concepts line up well enough to actually take you the rest of the, w of the way to a viable uh, piece of software. And when you've hit MVP, it doesn't necessarily mean that your design is solid, or even that it's workable for everything that you wanted it to do. But once you've hit this point where it begins to work, it validates a lot of your initial uh, work, and it becomes uh, a lot easier to um, to adapt it towards what you want it to do. It also tends to stir up your creative juices in the sense that when you see it working, uh, you can you start to get ideas on maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that, maybe these features are valid. It kind of increases your hunger to develop the software beyond a certain point. In order to get here from the place that I was last time, I'll remind uh, that I, I believe at the end of the last video, I had it where it was spitting out, um, it was spitting out blog entries that were in a database, in a SQL database. It, uh, pop uh, the database population script um, provided some sample data uh, and I think since I did my last video, I also had it load some default CSS. But it was spitting all that out in the form of text reports, and it wasn't yet able to do anything with the CSS. This weekend, um, I brought it up to the point where, A, uh, the, the engine that parses the CSS at the database and formats it into, uh, into a text slash CSS uh, document that's done and then I uh, ported over a lot of my HTML and general web page handling stuff from Pound. Um, I simplified some stuff uh, with both ends of that but I got it basically working. It'll take uh, it'll take equivalent blog entries to what I had in the old uh, in the old blog, uh, admittedly a lot simpler because I'm not aiming to add as many features to this implementation of the software, but it'll parse those and it uh, and I got it up to the point where it would spit out equivalent uh, sets of divs. A div is an HTML ele uh, element that's kind of the fundamental building block of modern web pages. You used to use a whole bunch of different tags. Uh, and you still can, but divs uh, generally represent contiguous areas of the screen, and you can populate them with a lot of things. 
and uh, and at least as far as I understand, although I, I'm not a web programmer, um, the gravity of modern web development is to move towards divs and away from most of the other things that you might uh, might have used in earlier versions of HTML. Even way back when I was working on Pound, uh, things were moving this way. Um, but fortunately, yeah, I was I was just able to uh, port a lot of the formatting code almost directly, add in uh, some of the usual wrappers. Um, th there are some portion. There are some things uh, I used to have a markup language uh, for Pound. It was kind of um, it was modeled after Me uh, MediaWiki, which is the software used by Wikipedia and Wikia and a number of other um, online wikis. And it would parse that and it would uh, render it into HTML. I haven't done that yet for this new piece of software. That code was kind of complicated and it used regular expressions. And regular expressions are a lot easier in Perl than they are in most languages. But I hope to eventually get that stuff ported over. Um, I am probably not going to start using this quite yet, or at least if I am. I will have to uh, I'll, I'll have to do it in a way where I don't mind wiping out the database and repopulating everything um, uh, as I continue to develop the software. Uh, th that's another point that you generally reach when you're developing software that has some kind of a data storage side to it. Uh, once you get the software mature enough, you might decide, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to treat it. Treat all the existing data that people have, might have already loaded into this thing with earlier versions lightly. I don't want to make people uh, convert or re-import data or something like that. The change is going to be evolutionary, um, and that's that's a valuable goal. But it also slows down development because it means that you need to support that those kinds of operations. Um, and uh, that it, it's just another concern that you don't want to take on until you, you think that your software has reached a certain level of stability. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm not there yet. Uh, I, and particularly given that I haven't even started on the review engine side, although I suspect I'll probably keep the review engine side will probably be a lot simpler than the blocking side. Um, or maybe it'll just end up sharing a lot of the same components. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about uh, about the way things have turned out. I'm still a little bit irritated about some of the decisions made by the authors of the Go programming language, but I'm getting used to them, and certainly I'm getting a lot faster in, in programming as I get used to the idioms. Um, since in previous jobs I've done some Go programming, uh, basically in the last two jobs, uh, I uh, when I uh, when I was at MongoDB, we had an internal LDAP that was written in Go, and I found a memory leak in it. And then when I was at Dropbox, a fair amount of the software in internal to Dropbox is written in Go, and I did some development on that too. But uh, this is really the first standalone project. I think at this point the next steps for me uh, are to, right now I have all of the sources um, stuck together inside of a single uh, inside of a single file and I'd like to start pulling uh, the sources out into separate files uh, so that they'll feel better organized. Um, there's also a fair amount of stuff that's hard coded that um, that I would like to uh, like to make settings, and uh, I would also like to implement some of the configuration stuff that I documented in the README that was just kind of speculative at the time. Um, the the point being that right now, if somebody else were to look at this, uh, it wouldn't be super obvious. Um, how to use it, how to extend it. And it's not really that I expect other people to pick it up, although they, they well might. 
it's uh, it's rather just kind of a personal point of pride in having things clean to a level where I'd, I wouldn't feel embarrassed for other people to look at them. Like right now, if other people were to pick this up, I wouldn't mind saying, you know, I made it real, uh, I made it over uh, a series of maybe half an hour to an hour uh, over over many, many days, and I didn't put a lot of continued effort into it, and it just uh, got over the MVP hurdle. I wouldn't mind saying that now, but if it were still in this state uh, a few weeks from now or a month from now, it would be kind of embarrassing unless it were, were like clearly abandoned. So I'd like to get it up to a, uh, to a point where it's not embarrassing. Um, and a lot of this refactoring will also make it easier to do uh, feature improvements moving on. Um, I think also I used to have uh, in, in Pound all of the paths in it were configurable. And I'd like to at least pull some of that stuff into uh, pull some of the, uh, pull that kind of feature into DWS. Maybe not make it as configurable because I, I think that a lot of that stuff it was configuration that I couldn't imagine, uh, or it seemed unlikely that people would actually want to configure it, even though like the path structure that I did for Pound was kind of a series of mistakes. Um, and uh, I, this is true for a lot of software, like anytime you get a developer talking honestly about something they built, uh, they'll certainly know what they would do differently next time. Um, but I did like that I had functions that would generate links based on URL portions, like based on paths and stuff, uh, and I wasn't manually constructing it. So I want to implement that kind of thing here too. Uh, but yeah, th that that will all get easier as I pull it into separate sources. Um, I think. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I'm going to do another one of these unless, like, I have anything particular to say. I kind of intended uh, to have a series of, uh, uh, a short series of videos that would get us up to MVP. And now that it's there, at least for the blog portion, um, things would just kind of devolve into boring status reports. And that just means that there's little value in doing more of these. But I hope that at least uh, taking it uh, taking it to this level has been kind of interesting, or at least it might be interesting for, uh, for people. Uh, so, I oh, oh yeah, and I guess the other thing that I'm, I'm likely to do is rip out some of the database abstractions. Um, I either need to rip them out or I need to redo them because the way that uh, that I had them uh, in uh, in the old uh, Perl software it was great for that. But the same idioms won't really apply for this because the database interface is uh, it's different, uh, and it just it doesn't map particularly well. So either I'll directly just continue to use the uh, the basic Go abstractions, or I'll have to find out a new way and a new set of abstractions that I actually enjoy using. Um, but yeah, just porting the old stuff it it really wouldn't be a good fit. So th that's pretty much it. Um, I, uh, yeah, as I said, I probably won't be posting more on, on this in the future. Um, anyhow, hope this has been interesting. Bye-bye.